So I think after uh, this council meeting, midterm council, the and uh, more or less the committees are coming to an end, the uh, tenures, there may not be very much work in the next three months. That's correct. But, uh, you know, some, some committees uh, do continue. Yeah. Or uh, maybe some committee, the some other document is in final stages right. or some amendments. So work right. will go on. Right. Yeah. But uh, Purisa, but uh, there has to be a new direction no, as to what is to be done with the document which was already cleared by the BSS. <laughs> that has to come from new actually, people, <laughs> by conveners. Ac <laughs> actually, they, they have, uh, you know, they have constituted another committee. <laughs> I know. It seems, it seems what has happened is uh -huh. there had been some uh, legal issues uh -huh. on some document. I so see. now the ministry probably it's the ministry wants that after, you know, a back this day approval, it should go through that committee and a new committee has been formed from a legal perspective okay. or it goes to the council. 3M has uh, uh, taken uh, some objection and maybe some court cases there, some issue has cropped up. I see, I see. Because now uh, manufacturers have entered into our profession. Earlier, uh, manufacturers were not there. So they were basically consultants, contractors, government officials, and they were a party to uh, preparation of the documents and use of the documents. So they no, should so many many products and all that. One of Correct. Those. So a lot of competition, business interests are there. So I think that is the issue which has cropped up. <clears throat> right. So uh, Ruhi, I think you will have to do everything because Deepika is still on her way. All the trains we oh, yes, have stopped, and. Um, uh, and what? Uh, the roads are jammed. People can't reach from their midway. Okay. And the internet okay. is not working on the way somehow. Okay, sir. So, Ruhi, all Shall I now. begin? Yes. Okay, thanks. Good evening, all. I welcome you for our panel discussion on Bridge Failures Day 2. To begin with, I would like to introduce our moderator for the event, Engineer Vinay Gupta. He is a civil engineer from Witts Pilani, 1983 batch and managing director of Massive Standing Consultants Private Limited. He is having specialization in bridges, flyovers, underground and elevated metro structures, precast building, 275 meter tall chimneys, etc. He is an active member of various court committees of BIS and IRC. His contribution include preparation of IRC SP65, that is segmental bridges, IRC SP71 precast, pretension girder bridges, etc. He is a recipient of several awards from IEI, IBC and UK IERN. He has been lecturing as guest faculty in IAHE, CRRI, CIDC, ISDA, DPC, etc. Engineer Gupta is all India president of IIBE. With this introduction, I hand over the session to Engineer Vinay Gupta. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ruhi. Okay, so good evening, everybody. This is the uh, second one in the series of two. Um, volumes of uh, discussions we thought we will have on failures of bridges. And I know that nobody wants failure. I know that we don't want to discuss failures, but somehow we are still forced to so that we can enlighten ourselves for future. So we are discussing failures. Last time, that is two weeks ago, we discussed failures of girder bridges, slab bridges, uh, segmental bridges, and some of those kinds of bridges. Today, we are going to discuss cable supported bridges and cable supported bridges may have box girder, steel structure or whichever type. The cable supported bridges, there are three categories. 
One is uh, extra dose bridges for smaller spans like 100 to 200 meters. Other is a uh, cable state bridge for larger spans of maybe 150 or 200 to 500 meters or even 1000 meters. The third one is suspension bridges for further larger spans. Like as of date, the largest span that exists is in Turkey, which is a 2.023 kilometer span, unsupported. So, but in general, all the cable supported bridges are in their own rights, special bridges. And people do take care uh, more or less adequately in the design and construction of such bridges. But despite of that, <clears throat> some failures have taken place, unfortunately. Recent one, we all know there was a failure in Bihar for whatever reasons, we cannot say at the moment, but there was a failure. Uh, if you remember a small failure, I think about 23 years ago, that's a Millennium Bridge in UK, which started heavily vibrating which is a pedestrian bridge, and they have to shut the traffic on it, <laughs> pedestrian traffic on it, all of it. We are all aware that the Golden Gate Bridge, which has a span of, I think, 1.2 or 1.27 kilometers unsupported in uh, San Francisco, also has undergone several repairs and upgrading. Uh, then there is a bridge called Dense Suspension Bridge in Germany, which uh, underwent repairs in uh, 1945 in fact it collapsed during those repairs it fell down and there are many such uh, examples maybe much fewer in india we are probably more careful in our construction and design but few more or much more abroad so with these words i think we'd like to begin and today we have four panelists one is uh, professor mahesh chandan other one is uh, mr v n hagade and next one is Mr. Umesh Rajesh Shirke. And other one is Engineer Alok Bhamek. And what we will do is to have about 8 to 10 minutes of presentation by each of the panelists who are very eminent in their own rights. And thereafter, uh, I will request uh, the, uh, uh, I mean, I'll take up, of course, first of all, myself, the questions from the uh, audience. And of course, after these, uh, uh, panel, uh, the presentations, as we call it, from these four eminent panelists. We may also invite some views from uh, our EC members who are on the screen. And while uh, discussing this, I see our Director General, Sri S.R. Tambeji. And good evening, sir. Thank you so much for joining in and sparing your time. Uh, right, sir. Uh, we don't hear you for some reason. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> are you hearing us? You can probably not hear us or no. <laughs> You're hearing us. Very good. So I think you can set up your uh, probably audio part. I think it happened earlier once uh, the same way that your voice was not reaching. Not yet. Okay, whenever you are able to uh, rectify this, in the meantime, at least I'm sure you will be able to hear us. Uh, so my request to all the panelists will be that please uh, finish their presentation in eight to 10 minutes so that eventually we have more time for discussion or interaction with the uh, audience. And any panelist would be free to answer the way he or he likes, of course. <clears throat> So uh, the very first panelist that we have is Professor Mahesh Chandan, and you all know that he doesn't need any introduction, but as a matter of uh, uh, respect, uh, I would like to read a few lines about him. Uh, Professor Mahesh Chandan is a chairman of Tandon Consultants Private Limited, where I also work. He is an international expert in the field of structural engineering. Many of the structures designed by Professor Mahesh Chandan and the company Tandon Consultants have been widely acclaimed and have received recognition in India as well as internationally. He has spearheaded the development of new codes of practice and path-breaking bridge technologies suited to Indian conditions. These include pioneering work in the field of segmental construction 
integral construction, accelerated bridge construction, long span bridges, and structures for metro, both viaducts and underground. He has designed several tall and prestigious buildings in India and abroad. Earthquake and wind effects on structures is his special area of expertise. His structures have been described as highly creative, futuristic, aesthetic, environmentally sensitive, and innovative. He has accreditation of International PE, Professional Engineer of India, and he's a fellow of Indian National Academy of Engineers, INEE. He is the recipient of Distinguished Alumnus Award of IIT Roorkee in 2018. He is currently Chairman Research Council, CSRI, CBRI. The uh, Indian Concrete Institute gave him Lifetime Achievement Award in 2008 uh, and made him Honorary Fellow of the Institute. He recently, in October 22, received uh, the IRC Lifetime Achievement Award of the Indian Roads Congress for his outstanding contribution in the highway engineering profession. Under the AICT program, INAE appointed him Distinguished Visiting Professor at IITs at Kanpur, Roorkee, and Gandhinagar. And currently, he is continuing as a guest professor at IIT Gandhinagar. So he is trying to enlighten all various IITs, Gandhinagar included, and Kanpur and Roorkee. So uh, I think uh, with these words, and I've, I'm sure we all know that we have a very very eminent uh, personality amongst us. So I'll request Professor Trandan to please. Uh, share your eight to 10 minutes of presentation, which can sort of uh, fire some uh, lights in the people's minds before they start asking their questions and clarifying doubts. And we may be clear, all of us clarify our doubts as well. Okay, so thank you very much, <coughs> Vinay. My pleasure. I'll try to live up to your expectations. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes. Fantastic. The first time it's happened. <laughs> Make it large so that. Is this all visible? Uh, as of now, only the folder is visible. Uh, uh, not yet opening of the PPT. Wow. Thought that it had succeeded, but apparently not. Maybe you can first unshare and then open the PPT and then go back to Zoom and share. Yeah, I thought I had done that, but uh, let me just see. Not as yet. It's still is folder. Oh. Well, let me start again. Mm -hmm. You still are sharing that uh, folder, so if you like, you can first unshare it. Yeah, yeah, I think. Uh... Nothing yet. Better unshare, uh, Professor Tanner, and redo it. Sorry? Because the better unshare the original because it's still we are seeing the first half. Now you share it. That is better. Hello? Uh, good, good evening, Harpreet. Yeah. Uh, just, just hold on, Arpit. Yes, now it's come, uh, Mr. Tandon. The, not the folder, but the actual uh, uh, actual PPT, and you can maximize it by uh, that PowerPoint sharing at the bottom. <coughs> okay, so here goes. <clears throat> so I wish to thank the IIBE for. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, for uh, you know, arranging this uh, webinar, I think it's uh, very timely. Uh, first, I want to say that 
the cable supported bridges are not very easy to design or to construct there are complications um in both these areas and i am with the time that we have i want to give you just one example a case study from uh, my side as to what all can happen the case study uh, this is the next slide can you see it yes yes, yes we can yes we can okay. professor dhanan yeah so this is the chira chira jara bridge colombia located 40 kilometers from bogota which is the capital city of that country it has a main span of 192 meters height of deck 156 meter the timeline was like this date of collapse 15 january 2018 appointment of investigation agency one week thereafter submission of report four months thereafter this is very interesting to see uh, how quick actions are taken this is the bridge uh, as you can see about 50 meters of the deck uh you, you can see on the uh, the left hand uh, side is erect but the right structure along with it has collapsed and you can see it on the hill side so mojeski and masters of mechanics burg Pennsylvania USA was engaged one week after the collapse to conduct a forensic investigation that included in in situ inspection of the collapsed structure analytical studies evaluation of the design review of the construction documentation and testing of materials which means practically it in the terms of the reference was quite vast and it covered both design and construction uh, let me see give you straight away what are the conclusions of the report so that one can suggestions that the, the uh, it had anything to do with poor they came to the cause of collapse was determined to be deficiency in the strength of the tower the design erroneously assumed that the reinforcement along most of the height of the diaphragm between the tower legs of the uh, uh, tower was effective to resist the horizontal tensile force caused by the tower's geometry as opposed to typical practice which utilizes a tension tie at the change in direction of the tower legs now if you have a this diamond shaped uh or which is the case here the the, the traditional way of uh making it safe is that at this point where you have the change of direction of the of the leg you connect these two points by a three beam because this is going to have a tremendous amount of tension when the uh, when you stress the, the stay cable the the whole uh, uh, pylon is actually in compression and very high compression so if the compression actually changes direction then you can see that what is required is a uh, you know at a at a beam at this point this is what we have been doing uh for quite a long time but somehow in this particular design what we assumed uh is shown here 
see this red red colored diaphragm and you can see the same diamond shaped tier uh, uh, tower what they thought was that we have got so much reinforcement here from top to bottom that this should be safe but as a matter of fact this is a concentrated force which you are applying at this junction and if you uh, think that something which is spread over such a long distance is going to make it safe then you are making a mistake and that is the mistake that the designers did so <clears throat> The other last point was that the current condition of the remaining tower. You see, since one tower was still remaining, they could investigate that thoroughly. Four months that they had, and they found that there were cracks there, and it was <clears throat> uh, at the at the point of collapse. You can say the start of the collapse was about to happen. So, uh, making this retro fitting and repairing and all that, they found it very problematic. Uh, and so, they decided to recommend that it should be demolished using explosive based methods to minimize danger. So, this is how the whole thing went. You can see this again if you want. This is the problem. Mom. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much for your kind attention because I think I've run out of 10 minutes. Mm, thank you so much. It looked like too short a presentation, but maybe you uh, clocked it very rightly. <laughs> well, those were the orders you had given. <laughs> well, not orders, requests. <laughs> Okay, so uh, thank you so much. Uh, very interesting uh, case study and how it was tackled in a broad manner, of course, uh, was really good to hear. Uh, so, Mr. Turner, you'd like to unshare your presentation? Sure. Yes, yes. So, uh, good evening once again for those who have just joined. Uh, now, our next panelist is Engineer VN Hagaday, and of course, very fine and very nice gentleman from Mumbai. And fortunately, he's been able to reach his <laughs> home from where he can make his presentation and attend the panel discussion in Mumbai, where trains are all cancelled. We know it's been raining for four days. Even I was affected by it to some extent yesterday. All right. So, Engineer Vian Hagade, he's presently a structural consultant at DECON, D E C O N DECON, Complete Solutions, and former chief executive officer of C, uh, and uh, that means CEO of Stoop Consultants and former executive director of Gammon. Uh, is a senior professional with a rich experience of over three and a half decades in construction sector in the area of design management, technical management, site management, project management, and contract management of highways, bridges, energy structures like chimney, cooling tower, uh, environmental, marine, and hydraulic structures. In fact, he's a fantastic combination of design and construction. And when it comes to uh, cable supported bridges, he was involved in the construction of a signature bridge in Delhi with a span of 251 meters, I would say into two equivalent. Uh, so we have a very right uh, person with us. He's a recipient of around nine national recognitions in addition to an international prize uh, from various inst institutions like IRC, ICI, NDRF, IBC, and IABSC. He has more than 140 publications to his credit and is a member of various IRC and BIS committees. Uh, he is uh, also a member of TG 10.1 of Federation International du Beton, FIB. That's a French uh, organization and FIB com and BIS committees. He's also, uh, sorry, he's, uh, he's, uh, well, a uh, group of work, uh, uh, Bedan, which is a special task group working on FIB model code 2020. So we had FIB model code 2000, then yeah. we had FIB model code 2010, and now we'll have FIB model code 2020. Apart from being uh, on technical board of ICI and academic board of SPCE, that is Sadar Patel College of Engineering, 
He is also a fellow of Indian National Academy of Engineers, that's FINA, FNAE. So with these words, I'll request uh, uh, the stalwart Mr. V. N. Hegade to make his uh, short presentation, opening uh, Pandora for questions from the uh, Yeah, yeah. Thank listeners. you. Yeah, thank you, Vinay, for that uh, uh, very nice uh, introduction in your inimitable style, you know, like that. Uh, I really like the style you introduce, uh, you give the introduction of the people. And I hope that you are able to see my screen, right? Yes, that, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, welcome all uh, the participants to this uh, very important uh, panel discussions in view of what's happening in this uh, country uh, recently. And uh, just before starting this, uh, uh, my presentation, I just want to bring into your, bring your attention one of the uh, very, uh, very well uh, edited uh, version of the ING IABSC journal that is uh, under construction big values, uh, causes and remedies, which has been a, a guest edited by Mr. Our Vinay Gupta on the uh, bridge values. Basically, I think if you go through this, uh, uh, this uh, particular journal, it gives a lot of insight into the, you know, like why the failures happen and uh, what are the remedies uh, we can uh, really look into. It's, a, in my opinion, some sort of a compendium on the under construction uh, bridge failures. Basically, I think uh, I suggest that all of you people should go uh, through that. Now, uh, coming back to this, you know, like this, today is the, uh, basically the, we are uh, discussing having a panel discussion on the cable supported bridges. As uh, when I said uh, last time, we had on the normal regular bridges uh, we had. And in our country, if you really look at the record holding cable state bridges, uh, are as uh, you can see on the screen. And uh, the first one is the Chambal Kota Bridge, which is actually suspended cable state bridge with the span of 350 meter. It is record holding because is the first actually suspended uh, cable stay, it still holds the record, actually suspended cable stay with base, which has a single plane of uh, cables as you can see here in the diagram over here. And uh, the record holding extra dose bridge in our country is uh, the Durgam Charu, as you can see here, that is around with the span of 233.85 meter, uh, while uh, uh, that is again uh, with the single plane of cables, as you can see here. Durgam Churu has a single plane of cables. That's again an actually suspended uh, extra dose bridge, which is. And uh, with the multi plane uh, uh, cables, uh, stay bridge, which is holding the record, is, uh, is still the second Hooghly Bridge, though uh, the construction of uh, uh, by, uh, Dwarka Bait, when it is completed, that becomes around 500 meters span, and that will hold the record. And I also put here signature bridge, uh, which is very close to my heart, as uh, Mr. Gupta has explained, uh, which is also a record holding because on one side of the uh, span, if you consider 215 one meter with the single pylon, it holds the record uh, in India. And uh, suspension bridges are not not much, you know, like uh, discussed and talked about in India till that uh, Morbi failure, which, uh, which uh, all of us. Uh, uh, discussed uh, quite in detail in, in, in the various forums. This is the Dobra Chanti Bridge with the 440 meter, it's holding the records. And uh, finally, the, the Hatania Doania, it's an extra dose bridge with the span of 170 meter, holds the record with the two planes of cables. You know, it's it has a, a two planes of cables. That is what it is. And though so many extra dose as well as the cable stay bridges uh, are going on in the country, you know, almost 30 each extra dose bridges as well as 30 each cable stay bridges are going on. There are no defined de guidelines on the design and the construction of the extra dose and cable stay bridges. Perhaps that could be the one of the reasons as to why the so many accidents are taking place because there is no de defined guidelines. Though there are, you know, the, the guidelines like CETRA, PTI, FIB, Bulletin, uh, SCD uh, 17, etc., which only talks about the, basically the, uh, it, these are not the specifically meant for the extra dose bridges, but they talk about the cable systems, which has to be used in the extra dose bridges as far as the cable is concerned. But however, the good news is we are already coming out with the guidelines of the extra dose bridge as well as cable stable bridge, as you can see here. And uh, 
Also, there are many suspension bridges uh, in India. I think it's a maximum number of uh, cable supported bridges in India is uh, suspension bridge, ironically, or ironically, or uh, you know, quite interestingly, almost around 633 suspension bridges are there in India, uh, which is a cable supported bridge, but uh, including the ones which have been dismantled and, of course, uh, uh, you know, like uh, done away with, you know, like that is not in the use. And uh, I think there's an urgent need for us to bring out the guideline on the design and construction of the suspension bridge, which because I personally feel suspension bridge is going to be the, you know, like for the, especially for a very long span bridges, if it's exceeding one kilometer, we have got very wide rivers where we require the long span bridges. That is going to be the order of the day that we'll have to bring in. What is the speciality of this uh, cable supported bridges? It has a load bearing elements like deck cables as far as the pylon. Normally in other bridges, the load bearing element is only the deck system. We'll have to deal with the three systems here, deck systems, cable systems, and the pylon system, and they interact and interplay with each other during the design as well as the construction. So it adds a lot of complexities uh, to the regular bridges, including the long span cantilever bridges. We, that is a long span cantilever bridges also has only one deck system as a load bearing element, uh, un unless the cable supporter system, it introduces a lot of complexities in the designs as well as the construction. So we'll have to be careful about it. When these cable supported bridges becomes the multi-span cable stray bridges, it induces, introduces much more complexities. It's not only if it's a single span cable supported bridge, the complexity is different, and the multi-span cable stray bridges complexity is different because we'll have to use the cantilever method of construction. As you can see here in the right side, cantilever method of construction, when it becomes a continuous systems and also the prop cantilever systems, the structural system itself gets reversed. The simply supported systems become the, uh, what we call it as a static system becomes the hyperstatic and your whole response, structural response, uh, has to be taken care of. This is the uh, bottom, uh, you know, like the photograph which I have taken from uh, Professor Tandon's one of the presentation, where it, it clearly gives, it becomes a cantilever construction, becomes the continuous at the mid span, and the, at the support, it becomes the propped cantilever, as you can see here. For the structural system, during the construction, it gets changed. There's a reversal of stresses, perhaps in, in particular cases. So it, it induces or introduces some more complexities which has to be taken care of. Perhaps uh, without the availability of the guidelines on the cable supported system, these are not taken care of properly during the construction. As such, we see many accidents as has been explained by, uh, by Professor Tannan also. So uh, these are some of the accidents in the recent past, which uh, I just noted here. The one of this in the left is not the recent one. It's in 1940, the Tacoma which everybody is aware of, casualty was a caucus pineal uh, dog called Tubby. That was the only casualty, but it changed the perception of the code itself and the uh, state of the art knowledge at that point of time about the wind dynamics was uh, not much and uh, we studied, we knew it. And then comes in the suspension bridge in India, Morbi suspension bridge failure, 135 casualties was there. It's during the service, basically. It's not during the uh, construction. It is because of the lack of maintenance, as all of us are aware of it. And uh, Morandi Bridge collapse in Italy. It's a well-known collapse. In the 40 people uh, died in that, uh, for more than 40 people. And it, during the service, again, it's because of the lack of, uh, you know, maintenance, the corrosion which has been set in the priestess cables. But also, I think that the failure can be do it during the uh, service it can be attributed to the lack of redundancy and the robustness in the conceptualization itself. And we know in India that uh, another famous uh, Kota Chambal Bridge uh, collapse, which, uh, which as one can see here, 41 casualties were there. And uh, I attribute the failure due to, because of the change in the sequence of construction, the original sequence of construction was changed due to the, that, that ended up this, uh, this, I think, Professor Tendon has explained in detail. It's because of the improper detailing in the conceptual design itself, uh, it has, has taken place. So 
the various, the, the last one is uh, so many accidents which has been taking place. It's a multi span exodose failure which has taken place in Bagalpur. Luckily, there was no casualty, and the reason is not known as Mr. Gupta has accepted. So, particularly in cable supported bridges, all cable supported bridges are the staged construction, as we can understand. There are sufficient guidelines which has been provided in Indian courts as well as the guidelines. Uh, say, for example, the annexure E6 of uh, IRC 112 uh, explains very clearly as to how to take care during the design, how to take care of this uh, uh, static becoming hyperstatic and the long term, you know, creep, sinkage effects, uh, those sort of things. It clearly says it has to be clearly mentioned. And all these four cases, it, it, it explains here for structures when the circumstances de described in the chapter above. The casting sequences, procedures should be introduced, indicated of the drawings are detailed in a construction procedure document along with assumed construction equipment and laws. I think, in my opinion, I think if we follow this uh, guidelines uh, in, in, uh, clearly, and also the structure is designed simple enough to check the static equilibrium by manual calculation at the intermediate stage of the construction. Say, for example, in case of the multi span cable stay bridges, if the structure is conceived in such a way that the intermediate stage of intermediate stages, if it's possible for us to or check the static equilibrium with the simple calculations rather than requiring the, uh, the complex, uh, you know, like uh, analysis using the sophistic Midas and Dahl, I think we'll be able to solve many of the problems of the you know, mishaps which have been taking place, in my opinion. And also, I just want to, uh, last two uh, slides, I just want, in my opinion, it is the EPC contract model, which has been, you know, like the, all this uh, failures of the bridges, which has been taking place, it has follows the EPC contract, where uh, in this EPC contract, uh, the contract schedules, as well as the contract, uh, uh, you know, contract agreement is prepared on the basis of the DPR, which has been prepared, that's a detailed uh, project report. The detailed project report uh, uh, prepare, give the technical schedules and the technical schedules become the part of this uh, uh, contract agreement or the RFP, you know, the, the, the RFP, what we call it as terms and conditions of the RFP. These uh, DPRs has been prepared, uh, has to be prepared properly by the qualified uh, people who has the experience in the detailed design of the uh, special structures like the cable supported structure. If it has been conceived, by the persons or the designers who has not uh, done the detailed design of the complex structures like the cable state bridges and the extra dose bridges and suspension bridges, if the DPR is prepared and that DPR becomes a technical schedule of the contract agreement, I think there's a lot of possibilities of the uh, failures which can be adopted. And also during the execution of the contract, if EPC contract, we have the three design at the three levels, the designs have been checked. And uh, one is the detailed design consultant. Another is the proof checking consultant, safety consultant. We have been employed by the contractor, whereas the authority engineer is appointed by the authority. That's the owner appoints it. The responsibility of the authority engineer is not only to check the designs, but also to ensure the workmanship and the quality of the work at the site is executed in such a manner that uh, that uh, that uh, that that conforms to the designs assumptions which has been made designs and drawings assumptions which has been made i just want to bring it to the notice uh, before throwing up out for the uh, you know like uh, discussions uh, there are three design uh, entities in the epc contract model which we have been following one is the design director if we really look at the definition of the design director appoint a design director who will head the contractor's design unit and shall be responsible for the surveys, investigation, collection of data, and preparation of the preliminary and detailed designs. But it, 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 it really clears the spirit of this uh, specification is to have the design director, who is an independent entity. He is not a de detailed design consultant who has been appointed by the contractor, basically. It is an independent consultant. Design de detailed design consultant could be different, but many of the cases we see the detailed design consultant himself is the design director. And uh, I think in my opinion, there's a conflict of interest uh, between these two uh, things and which has to be. 
Also, it has to be seen that particular class clearly says that the surveys, the investigation, collection of data, and preparation of the preliminary and detailed designs, it doesn't distinguish as a, you know, between the, sub, the, the temporary structure design, construction uh, process design, and the permanent structure design. But it is understood by many of the you know, uh, design directors. The understanding is the only thing is to check is the, the permanent structure design. It's not necessarily to check the temporary structure design. That needs to be done. And another is the proof consultant. I think the real role of the proof consultant is also very clearly spelled out here. Proof check the detailed calculations, drawings, and the design, which have been approved by the design uh, director. And the authority engineer also has a role in the design approval process has been, as has been given in this particular process. If all these things is very judiciously in detail uh, is uh, followed, in my opinion, uh, mishaps, many of the mishaps uh, uh, will be, uh, can be avoided in my opinion. Finally, with this uh, uh, particular comments, I think uh, I have, I think I exceeded my time limit of 10 minutes. I think uh, Mr. Vinay uh, Gupta will have to pardon me for that. And uh, uh, with this small uh, uh, presentation of mine, uh, I'll be ready to take up any questions to answer any questions uh, about the presentation which I made uh, during the panel discussions. And thank you. Uh, thank you. With this, uh, I'll stop my presentation and uh, give back this uh, podium, virtual podium to uh, Mr. Vinay Gupta, the moderator. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hegde. Uh, very lucid uh, presentation, a compendium of uh, various bridges, failures, and broadly the remedies that could be found out. And uh, the other thing you said, which I'll discuss with Mr. S.K. Puri after a while, uh, about this uh, DPR. So there should be some checks on DPR consultants' work as well. We proof check the designs, we do many things, quality control, third party, and all that. But yes, DPR consultants' work is just taken for granted. And perhaps you have made a right point. So I think now we should go to next panelist. Mr. Umesh Rajesh Shirke, our third panelist, I think he's traveling and not able to connect. So without uh, sort of wasting time, I would request uh, Mr. Alok Bhamik to first make his presentation. Let us hope Mr. Rajesh Shirke is able to join by then. If not, then of course, we'll have to see what to do. So uh, we have this expert on uh, cable-supported bridges, uh, Mr. Alok Bhamik. And I've known him since ever since almost he would have graduated and I graduated, maybe a couple of years here and there. She Alok Bhamik is an eminent structural engineer with more than four decades of experience in the profession of bridge and structural engineering. He is proactively involved through various institutions and with colleagues, peers, and the structural engineering fraternity to disseminate knowledge for the capacity building of engineers and to uh, cultivate a culture of excellence in their respective workplace. Uh, he's a fellow of uh, National Academy of Engineers. He's uh, an international professional engineer of the Institution of Engineers, IEI, uh, -E that is India. He's also a FIDIC certified consulting professional. He's the recipient, uh, sorry, there was a phone. So, uh, He's a recipient of 24th SB Joshi Memorial Award. That's a coveted award, I must say, uh, for excellence in bridge, engineer, uh, bridge and structural engineering for the year 2018. He is a past president of the Indian Association of Structural uh, Engineers, IEA Structi. In fact, uh, immediate past president and currently chairing the Publications Committee and Professional Issues Committee. So his interests have not died down just by stepping off as a president. He's continuing with his uh, passion to the, towards structural engineering with this IEA Structi. He's also an active member of National Governing Council of Consulting Engineers Association of India, CAAI, and vice chairman of the Indian National Group of the International Association of Bridge and Structural Engineering, that is INGIBSC. He is a co-chairman of editorial board of INGIBSC. Further, he is active in many professional bodies like Indian Roads Congress, Bureau of Indian Standards, Institution of Engineers, India, Indian Geotechnical Society, FIB, that is Federation International Dula Beton, 
the French organization. And I can see him equally active in IIBE as well. So here we have Mr. Alok Bhamik. Mr. Bhamik, please share your eight to 10 minutes of presentation. Uh, your PowerPoint, please. Thank you, Vinay. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay, so I don't have any PPT presentation. Okay. Uh, uh, I have not prepared any presentation, but uh, I would like to speak for 10 minutes uh, or so, or maybe less. Sure. Uh, see, this, uh, I think, firstly, I must thank IIB for inviting me and also for choosing such an important topic, which uh, uh, in the last one year, I think, uh, this is the third time that one of the professional associations is talk, or rather four times that one of the associations is talking about bridge failures. Unfortunately, we have to uh, keep uh, talking in the webinars about bridge failures because it is continuing to happen at a very uh, accelerated pace. That's very unfortunate, but you know this uh, this is something which I think we have seen in the last five ten years uh, very sharp increase in the rate of failures. Uh, long span or short span or medium span, but when it comes to a long span, the, the impact is much more. It is impactful because not only because the impact in terms of the cost and the span is more, but also because when it is a long span bridge failure, whether it is during construction or post construction, uh, it comes to limelight. Uh, the media immediately, you know, it attracts the media attention. So uh, I was just, uh, you know, brooding through all these uh, bridge failures. I have been uh, giving many lectures and also written many articles on this. What are the prime reason why, you know, we have this accelerated pace of uh, uh, failures in the recent past? I would say there are only two uh, reasons if I have to uh, sort of make it very, very crisp. One is that the fact that we are building at an accelerated pace. Our demands for infrastructure growth is much more than our supply. That means in terms of competent engineers to design, in terms of competent engineers to construct or supervise or to manage contracts, we are awfully short than what is the demand. And I think we are refusing to accept this hard reality. And this is a fact. This is one of the reasons why we have too many failures because we all know who those of us who are either in the you know in the in the design or as an owner when we go to site when we deal with contractors will we deal with consultants we deal with authority engineers we know how awfully we are having a list of incompetent people there but still we uh, don't talk about reducing the pace of growth because that is also equally important. Now, this dichotomy is one of the main reasons why we have too many failures too frequently. Second, and most importantly, we, you know, as a society, we lack a safety culture. I mean, there is, there is absolutely no accountability on the part of stakeholders when there is a failure whether be it the authorities, be it the contractors or the consultants. Ultimately, you know, we talk about it for 15 days, 10 days, 15 days, and we wait for the next failure to discuss again in a webinar. But you go to the past failures and see what actions have been taken, how uh, we have improved our uh, standards. I think uh, it's, it's a very sorry state of affairs. So, uh, now, the second part which I would like to address is as to the big question that is, you know, why these, uh, 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 what is the root cause of this problem? Why this kind of failure occur, uh, occurs? Can we address them and uh, what is the way forward? Firstly, you know, we have to, if we have to address the issue, firstly, we have to address on the contract agreement, the contract agreement between the client and the contractor. That is the first point of attention that we need to give if we want to arrest the uh, failures in future. Because as we all know, most of our contracts are one-sided contracts. It is not a balanced contract. And if you do not have a balanced contract, if it is heavily one-sided, then there is hardly any accountability. 
because uh, on paper every accountability is to the contractor the authority is engineer the owner client uh, can always you know claim that you know it's a epc contract and therefore uh, whether it is design whether it is construction supervision is not mandatory we are uh, the authorities engineer claims that uh, we can only need, need to supervise only 10% of the work and that 10% is critical ones or non critical ones are not defined which means that essentially the signal that you are giving is that the uh, the the uh, mega contracts can uh, happen without any uh, supervision and specifically that is what is happening we, you go to the site uh, in a major contract you will find that the major concreting work is going on where even the contractors uh, you know uh, sort of uh, senior level engineers will be missing at site leave aside the authorities engineer and leave aside the uh, engineers from the from the from the client owner client uh, if there is a, a, a sort of variation uh, in the contract the variation will not be finalized uh, because of the lack of understanding of the project management so these are many major issues i think it's a very complex thing uh, but i think uh, uh, you know suffice it to say that uh, if we have a balanced contract then many of the problems uh, can be uh, can be can be sort of addressed but unfortunately we don't have so if you if you have a multi if you if you have a project which is funded by multinational banks like world bank or adb they force you to use the fidic uh, contracts for the contract management and in those cases these kind of disputes are far too little but then you have to also address the issue of incompetent engineers in the field in the design and that is that is an area where we need to do a huge capacity development and i don't see the rate of capacity development uh, uh, you know uh, uh, initiatives are uh, they, they are too little for the kind of uh, uh, you know problems that we are actually facing there is in in short i would say lack of intent uh, we are a tolerant society we in the fear of blame in the fear of ruined reputation we whenever there is a failure all the stakeholders they come together to bury the failure uh, and reasons under the carpet because it is in everybody nobody has killed jessica that is the uh, that is the logo i would like to say there is there is a you know uh, there is a there is a uh, sort of deterioration in the moral and ethical values in the in our society and that all these put together is the real reason for the present uh, status of our uh, bridge uh, fraternity coming to very specifically long span bridges uh, recent failures uh, i think some of the lessons we code makers have to learn one or two uh, i would like to point out that we need to deliberate in our committee meetings uh, one is the um, the the concept of progressive uh, collapse i think uh, the way the progressive collapse is being dealt with in buildings we need to now after the recent uh, failures which we have seen you know in video i think there is a need to address this issue in our code uh, so far we have not talked about progressive failure at all when you when you make multi span uh, cable supported bridges uh, spread over 3 kilometers series of uh, you know uh, extra doors or cable state bridges uh, what happens if you know a small portion collapses does it lead to a 3 kilometer bridge collapse that issue is needs to be addressed now very seriously in our uh, in our uh, you know uh, codes and standards because recently we have seen a number of cable supported bridges coming up uh, in a very very alarming pace and i think there is need to sort of sort of have a serious view on this professor tandon in his initial uh, presentation very nicely in a very crisp manner showed about that tirajara bridge and what he importantly showed is that how post failure within the limited time uh, a investigation uh, was constituted and it had a time of 4 months in which uh, it, it was done uh, i remember 1987 when the mandavi bridge collapsed uh, the entire it shook the entire country you know it was 
and it it uh, resulted in formulation of sp33 i think within a very short period of couple of months and that sp33 was a radical change in the uh, the way we used to design uh, bridges today i think our society has become completely immune to failures so many failures have occurred but we haven't had a serious committee framed by ministry of transport or nhai to come out with some clear cut guideline on how to uh, mitigate this risk and you know uh, uh, make sure that such failures do not occur we do not have a uh, that means we probably have becoming immune to such failures sorry to give this kind of long long statement sorry thank you very much i i think i have exceeded my time <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Mr. Alok Mamik. I think you have raised some of the very fundamental issues, and uh, I hope they are exercised, they are analyzed, and then they are followed rightly in a right uh, perspective. Uh, right. So uh, I think first of all we have our Director General uh, Shri S R Dhameji. So, sir, are you able to uh, set your audio system right wherein we can hear you? I, yes. Am I audible? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I'll request you to say a few words about this, whatever is happening, and your long going experience of five or six decades. I don't know how many. Please. See, first about the seminar today, we had a very fascinating presentation by Mr. Tandon, a very uh, eye opening type of reason for failure. And two very illuminating lectures from two very eminent engineers. But I mean, I expected this to be a seminar on cable stay bridges. None of the lectures touched on that aspect. I thought cable stay means the longitudinal system of cables and the decks. But these lectures have not touched on that. The two lectures were very, very necessary and eye-opening uh, lectures. And if we follow that, many of the failures would be avoided. But they were not. And I don't think in India we have come across a actual cable stay bridge failure. They have all been other causes for failure of those bridges. Uh, that Tacoma Bridge probably was really a cable failure. And maybe that Morandi, that bridge might be a cable failure. I mean, I have nothing more to add because I don't have, I'm not fortunate enough to have constructed a cable stay bridge in my time. We had too little money for infrastructure works in those days. So that's all I would like to say for the present. Thank you, sir. Uh, this was supposed to be uh, this panel discussion only on failures. So it was presumed that people know what cable supported bridges are in various forms. So starting from that as a zero point, it was to see how they fail, why they fail, what all fails and what to do for it. Anyway, next time I'm sure we will have a proper conference on cable supported bridges of all kinds. Uh, with examples and also otherwise. So uh, I think now we have some very uh, sort of uh, uh, high profile stalwarts. We have uh, uh, engineer Ravindra Kumar Goel from Railways. We'll hear him in a while. We have uh, engineer uh, Satish Sharma, ex HCC, and now, of course, he has a different uh, forte and he's in Delhi. So, Sharma sir, would you, I mean, I'm sure you have uh, again about four, four to five decades of experience. So, would you like to say a few words in two, three minutes before we start off with the uh, audience questions? And my request to all the audience is that please post your questions in question answer box, that is Q&A, please. And we'll take up all the questions. Yes, good Sharma sir. Yeah, good evening to all of you. It was really interesting after hearing all these four lectures. Few very pertinent que question which uh, Mr. Bhomik has raised, really they need to be addressed. One is competency, 
another is the commitment. When I was dealing from contractor side and many of the bridges, whether it is cable lifted, even it is a steel girder, whatever you call, many of the places people slowly, they are not showing the tendency even to follow the design, drawing and methodology which has been elaborated by the competent engineers for that project. And recently, one or two projects which has failed, in particularly in Bihar. On both the projects, this has happened. Luckily, uh, Hegede Saab and Tendon Saab both were associated even for the few segmental fellow of the six lane bridges. Even I was very, uh, I think two years back, I was associated with this Sultan and Bridge, which has failed recently. The basic problem is even that owner side, people are not having that sort of interest to see that whether our things are going to be there in proper direction or not. What he said, even the supervisor and even the engineers from contractor and owner side, they are not present at site when the critical concreting or pre stressing or grouting of the cables and other things are going on. So until we are going to have a shift in particularly our <laughs> mind, our way of working, I think it will be a little challenging for controlling these type of fellows in future. So let us do our bit, whatever best we can do. Let us, by way of organizing these seminars, maybe discussion with the government officials, let us look how we can help them, how we can put certain guidelines by virtue of which at least safety is going to be important for the gifters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, it has really come from a, an experienced person who has been into construction more or less all his life. And I think now you are in a field which is, I mean, your new company that is Hindustan Consulting Association Private Limited. Uh, good, good to hear that. So, oh, sir, now uh, we want to also hear the railway's perspective. If engineer Ravindra Goel, R.K. Goel sir, is there, uh, well, he seems to be in an office. Wow, <laughs> time. So, the uh, uh, railways are known for highest level of safety, as we call it, and we are discussing an issue that is safety. So, your views are most important. Uh, first of all, very good evening to everybody on the panel and all the audience. Uh, after a very long time, I have come back on this forum. Uh, so it's again, by the chance, you can say I was a bit free and I saw the message and then I just recalled, yes, it's a very good topic and I must uh, listen to the eminent people on the panel. So since you have invited me, so I have got a few things to say. Uh, Actually, something has been said about the DPR, and then uh, we recently, uh, Mr. Sharma has uh, uh, told about the ownership. Actually, ownership is the most important thing. If somebody owns his job, probably he will put all his efforts into it. Unfortunately, people have probably forgotten to own the uh, engineering as uh, they used to have earlier. The other people used to be passionate about the engineering. We used to see what they are doing, how it is working. I still remember when we joined the railways, we were sent for training on uh, a bridge in Bombay. You all know that was between uh, a three honey creek bridge. Our eminent engineer, Mr. Uh, you must have heard his name, Mr. S. Yuka, he used to be the deputy speaking over there. And during the training, uh, he made us to uh, witness the complete casting of a girder. It used to take about 24 hours. Without any sleep, we had witnessed that casting. And that was the first experience to know how uh, the quality control was to be ensured. So that kind of passion and passion, passionate working is required if you want to have a uh, hassle-free construction and a very good bridge uh, is required to, is, uh, to come up. So, if uh, we DPR ki baat hai, actually planning is very important. When somebody prepares a DPR, it's a uh, detailed project report, 
I have seen that the detailed project report, the details are only in the name most of the time. Inside, if you see, you will not find the details. There would be some sketchy kind of an a whole arrangement and the details would be missing. The facts would be missing, triggers would be missing. So what do we need probably is to have a system in which we can have a uh, peer review of each and every DPR before it is accepted. Unfortunately, the people, uh, the agencies are nominated, but they also do a very shady job of peer review. They don't go into the details. The reason may be the people are not trained for uh, uh, bridge engineering in fact. They do not know what is to be seen, how it is to be seen. So issues are many. Ultimately, it boils down to the same thing. You need to develop a pool of knowledgeable people in the field of bridge engineering, which we have discussed many times earlier also. And for that, a government initiative is only can help us. So at some of the forums, we may think of writing to uh, appropriate people in the government. At my level, I keep on trying, but unfortunately, people don't listen to such ideas. That is very unfortunate. So, uh, uh, with limited knowledge which I have got, I have got one uh, idea, if somebody is uh, able to appreciate that, uh, to how to develop the ownership. One way can be if we make a contract in such a way that a person who whoever is designing or building he is also required to maintain the bridge for the whole service life. And then finally, after the end of the service life, his liability will finish. That service life may be 60 years, it may be 80 years, it may be 100 years. The problem is that who will uh, watch for 60 years, whether he has performed his uh, role uh, as a uh, operator or maintainer. So, but this, this idea used to work earlier. In British times, all the railway bridges were earlier built on this logic itself. And the people used to make the steel bridges. I still remember when I was CV, I used to get the letters from, uh, out of the way, some, some people, we, we used to get the letters that this bridge was constructed by us some 100 years ago, steel bark of course, and the liability is finishing, ending on so and so date. Henceforth, we won't be liable for the uh, proper uh, functioning of this bridge state. So that was a pleasant surprise uh, that used to be a surprise for us. So this kind of thing is now uh, we don't find anywhere. People don't take pride that something has been built by them and they uh, are not taking the responsibility for the whole service type of that structure. So these are my views in brief because the uh, Extempore, you can say, have spoken. So I hope that something good will come out from such discussions because many people, young people are listening. They will start thinking and then do something about it. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. So nice, to, so nice of you. Grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dwell, sir. And now we have our uh, digitization man, uh, without whom things don't work nowadays. Engineer Swapnil Joshi is also the secretary of uh, IIBE, and you can rightly see in his background the suspension bridge. <laughs> so, Swapnil, your views on this whole thing, whatever you must have heard so far. Yes, sir. First of all, due to some rains, I was late, uh, you know, joining today's session. Uh, when I said I'm audible? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I'm very, I know, I would say uh, young to comment on the topic, but yes, whatever I have uh, uh, learned and seen over a period of uh, in my years of experience in the engineering and that too, in specifically in bridges, when I, uh, during my experience in Gammon and LNT and as an independent uh, uh, consultant, so we basically, I'm uh, uh, what I am looking at, uh, as you mentioned, the digitalization perspective towards it, as yes, wish failures and monitoring of the same is uh, very much important using sensors and other technologies available, along with the technical parameters to it. So, uh, so we are through digitalization also uh, looking at various things and doing an effort to, uh, you know, have an, uh, uh, you know, precautionary uh, measures uh, for the uh, this kind of failures which can be identified prior using the sensors and other kind of an embedded uh, uh, you know 
uh, technology available in the market which are now being widely used as well as the uh, the, the you know the uh, the digitalization platform of bim also is there are some provisions where the uh, the you know the uh, proactive maintenance and other things also can be uh, looked at through the bim model or through the ar vr technologies i'm mainly focusing on that part when i'm giving my comment on it uh, since i missed some of part of the presentations it was a, a Uh, a nice uh, views which are being mentioned before and uh, in front of stalwarts uh, i am uh, i'll fall short of words uh, right now but then my focal area at the moment is to try and utilize at the max the uh, available technology to uh, to to you know to analyze the things beforehand till uh, not waiting till the failure is happening and uh, you know help the tech, help the uh, industry using the tech, uh, with the help of the technology to see how we can avoid the failures in the coming days so that is my quick uh, and a short view point on this so i think with that i'll just hand it over to you sir thank you thank you mr sapnil joshi i think uh, well uh, for those who may or may not know mr sapnil joshi is a managing director of his company intento engineering and they are heavily into digitization as i said on a planning on um, maybe investigation wherever there is anything and any construction there is digitization and he's quite into it uh, and of course he has given some views but probably he has much more experience which we could hear from him but never mind uh, now we have our ec member executive committee member mr d o tawde uh uh i mean of course he has been a part of nhi so we have the whole government with us <laughs> and i request mr tawde sir to give his government view point on this whole thing about failures please uh thank you vinay ji thank you very much uh in fact this a uh, topic failure of cable supported bridges is most appropriate with the instances of a uh, failure few failure i will say few failure it is most appropriate in timely intervention by the indian institution of bridge engineering on 25th december 2009 this uh, chambal bridge at kola collapse uh, kola i was summoned on 25th midnight by my then boss to reach project site with the divers from mumbai there was a very reputed international company having the rescuing operation of the divers and uh, very reputed i took a team up about 10 very eminent very experienced divers and reached 26th morning just to see if we could save life i stationed there four days with my team and a team from mumbai with spark and uh, unfortunately we could not save any lives and whatever body rescued 41 i think officially uh, so that was my first incidence of collapse of cable stay bridge i spent uh, early morning of 26th to about 30 or 3 4 days till the 38th Uh, but we left with only rescued bodies could not save lives it was officially 41 uh, you know it is a chambal bridge is a very deep bridge then many years committee was constituted though i was uh, from government side the some uh, now uh, attendance have has very that it was the sequence of failure sequence of construction and like that. but i think like morandi or others internationals no concrete reasoning was publicly made though i was a part of government but i swear and i was a uh, part of the rescue operation not rehabilitation rescue operation also uh, that was shocking to everybody that was the almost second bridge after the naini bridge under construction and an nhi but we learned a lessons afterward a lot of lot of systematic way we started working though pace of construction of long span bridges was very nominal even after 2009 to 14 we had very 
very nominal type of bridges. Then my in-depth association in construct the bridge construction of bridges, Juari Bridge. I was associated as a chief engineer in design preparation of design. Uh, Mr. Atul Bobe was preparing design on behalf of state PWD Goa. Though I was, a, it was being a central central government project, but uh, DPR was uh, started by state government. Then they submitted DPR to, I was a chief in uh, ADG that time. In 2014, when Mr. Gadkari took over, the project was submitted to government of India for its consideration and approval. It was a long, about uh, 20 kilometer bridges, flyover on the other side, and 1.084 1 meter long bridge. The main span was 360 meter, main, main central span, and two side, side span of 140. So we consider cable uh, cable stay bridge up six forty meter. Work was awarded in uh, mid mid fourteen, and we started the bridge. That uh, bridge was started officially appointed date was on eleventh four two thousand sixteen. So we took about a year for getting approval of the governments, then the invitation of tenders, preparation of the qualifying qualifying criteria we wanted to be that time i was having some authority to decide we wanted to be very rigid on the selection criteria as we are talking our contract should provide some rigid conditions on the qualifying criteria of some long span cable supported bridges and we did but as you as you know it was a deviation from the epc document which was recently launched and the bureaucracy was not in favor of Unfortunately, not in favor of making lot of changes. Being APC, let give the borderline your requirement. Let the contractor come. It was a broad thinking like that. Then pre-qualification process, we want it to be rigid so that an international contractor in association with the Indian contractors having real experience of construction of bridges should only be qualified. That was our intention. But again, uh, international company joined hands with the Indian company. Uh, they remain behind this. They, they, they were not the front runner. Uh, we loosely talk about